Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to be looking at laboratory recall and also I'm going to be talking about NHSBT recall. So before we get into that, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Obodo. I've been working in the UK as a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. So yeah, let's get into it. So first of all, I'm going to start by saying that NHSBT means NH. S, like you already know, then BT, meaning National Health Service, then Blood Transplant. So that is NHSBT. So what happened in this NHSBT is that they have different departments. One of their departments has to do with Center for Blood Donation. So uh, potential donors, they come to the centers, they will be screened, then they will donate blood if everything is fine. Now, once this blood is donated, what then happens is that it, the blood is then taken to another site, which is another site of the uh, Department of NHSBT. Then it will be received into the lab, okay? Then they will separate it into different components. Remember that from one donor, we can have different components of blood, which are red blood cells, platelets, FFP, and cryoprecipitate. You can also get white blood cell okay now once that is separated into different compartment and then it can be stored appropriately following the storage what happened at any hospital any nhs hospital that require any of the components they can then make an order so they can make the order using what we call obos okay so when they make the order the nhs bt will receive the order so you may hear something like maybe this hospital may say we need this o positive we need o negative we need this blood we need ffp we need cryo as the case may be they will specify what they need in fact when it comes to some of the things that they need they may specify the antigens negative that they need in the red blood cell they may also specify whether the platelet is going to be high theta negative or not they will specify all of that so that old boss allows you the opportunity to make order depending on what you want so once nhsbt receive the order they will then issue the unit based on what you have asked for now when they issue it nhsbt transporter will then transport the blood component that that hospital have ordered into that hospital so they will receive it that means the hospital that ordered it will receive that what they ordered now when they receive what they ordered they cannot check what they have ordered and once they check what they have ordered if everything is okay they can now kind of receive it in into their own laboratory stock okay now this is where nhsbt recall comes in so if during the time they are checking what they have ordered and they notice any kind of abnormality what they are going to do they will then have to notify nhsbt and that means they will activate a record now let me give us some background of the kind of things that may lead to record now i'm going to try to put it into different three major components or four major components of of blood we have like the red blood cells platelet ffp and cryo okay now, when you talk about the red blood cell, if you see any form of clot, if you see something like this color, if it does not appear normal with the color of the red blood cell, that is also something for you to report. Another thing that you might see is something like, if you notice that the red blood cell appear hemolyzed, okay? So if you suspect hemolysis in that red blood cell, it is something that also you will need to report. Now, of course, if you see something like lipemic, if you notice any form of lipid floating, in that very red blood cells, of course, you can also have to initiate recall. If there's any kind of whitish substances in the red blood cells, that may not be good. So, of course, that will also lead you to initiate a recall. Now, when it comes to platelets, if you see something like discolored, if the color you are seeing is not normal, does not appear normal with platelets, you also have to initiate a recall. If you see something like large clumps, okay, no one will say platelet clumps. So, when you see something like large clumps, remember that. We want the platelet to be floating, okay? We don't want it clumped. So, but when you notice any form of clump in the platelet, you can also initiate a recall. If you notice any topic or white deposit in the platelet, again, you can initiate a recall. And if you notice anything like small flecks and residual of any substances in platelet, you also initiate a recall. Now, what about the cryoprecipitate and FFP? 
Now, if you also notice something like hysteris, like you know, high blue rubin in that very FFP or cryo, you can initiate a recall. Okay, and of course, that means it can also be associated with the discolor. So once you notice that the FFP or cryo appear, the color is not consistent with what FFP is supposed to be, you also initiate a recall. Then, of course, if you notice lipemic or white flags, you can also initiate a record. If you notice clumping or any form of aggregate, okay, you know, which could come from the proteins, you know, that are, that are in the FFP or cryo, then you also initiate a record. Now, what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say here is that once you notice any abnormalities, similar like the things I've just highlighted, it means that you have to report it back to the NHS meeting. And that report of saying, I've noticed something that I think it is not normal. That means a recall will then be initiated. Now, why are we then initiating a recall in the laboratory? Now, first of all, I want you to know that when we talk about a recall, what it means that there is something that you've noticed that is very wrong. Wrong in the sense that it may potentially affect the patient or it has been confirmed that it can affect the patient. So any form of abnormality that you notice in any of the blood components, you should be able to report it. Now, what is the procedure in reporting any of these abnormalities? Now, what you have to notice that the once you notice something, that means recording, initiating a record starts from observation. So once you observe any abnormalities, the next thing you do is to make a phone call. So you are calling the manufacturer or wherever you get the product. So on this occasion, you then call NHSBT Hospital Services. So Hospital Services is a part of NHSBT. It's one of the department of NHSBT. Meaning, as the name sounds, Hospital Services. So under NHSBT, the Hospital Services, they are the ones that provide all kinds of services to other NHS hospitals. Does that make sense? So now, once you call them, you say, the blood that has been issued to us, this is what I've noticed, this is what I've noticed. So once you have reported what you have noticed, you then, it means that you are activating a record, you are initiating a record. Does that make sense? Now, before I go ahead, in NHSBT recall, it can happen in two ways, even similar with other laboratory records. A recall, it means that the person that receives it, if I'm to use the word, the customer can initiate a record. And the manufacturer, you know, can also initiate a record. Meaning that the hospital that receives the blood product can initiate a record if they notice anything that is abnormal. Also, the NHSBT, if they notice anything that is abnormal, they will also initiate a record. Now, in initiating a recall, it starts with observation. Once you observe that abnormality, irrespective of where it's coming from, you now put a phone call across. Okay? So if it is the hospital that observes it, the hospital will then put a phone call across to the NHSBT hospital services. Then the hospital will say, This is what you have noticed. The person calling will say, This is what you have noticed. This is what you have noticed. And once you have reported that, NHS people will then give you advice. They can advise you on what to do about it. Sometimes they may tell you, okay, quarantine that blood product. Sometimes they can say, okay, destroy or discard the blood product, okay? Whichever way it goes, they will send you a form. When they send you a form, either through email or by fax, then you now fill the detail of that blood unit, that blood product, you fill the details and also feeling what that makes you to initiate that very recall. Does that make sense? So once you fill in all the details, you can also fax it back to them or email it back to them. Does that make sense? Once a recall has been initiated, NHSBT recommend that every necessary form should be sent to them within 24 to 48 hours. So you complete the form, and once you complete the form, then you can send it to them. Now, what happens is that if they ask you to discard the blood product, okay, within your own hospital, what you're going to do, you discard it, okay, of course, take evidence, then you can now forward everything that the form that you've completed, you can forward it to them. Sometimes they will tell you no, that you should guarantee the blood product, that they are going to send you a bottle to be able to transport, to be able to send them back the blood product. For example, they may tell you, okay, don't worry, quarantine the product, we are going to send you a bottle and the bottle is called bio bottle. 
when they send you the bio bottle, then you can put the blood product inside and with that form that you are filling, you can send it to them. You can also photocopy it if you want and put it along with that very blood product and send it to them. So what happens when you send it to them, they can then investigate it further. But that is how you can initiate a record within the hospital. Another thing that can cause a record may not be because of under NHSBT record. Another scenario there might be it may not be because you notice anything wrong in the blood product. It could be because you get a suspected you know blood transfusion reaction, or maybe there's also something like suspected maybe the transfusion reaction as a result of maybe bacterial infection. For example, let me give us this detail. So once NHSBT receives the blood, you know from the donor, they do other further tests. One of the things that they do is that they do culture. They can do blood culture, they can culture the platelet and so on. So when they culture it, sometimes they may have issued the unit. And when they issue the unit, if they notice any form of growth, bacterial growth, even if they have issued the unit, they will recall it back. Now, sometimes it may not be the case. It may be because after the donor has finished donating the blood, what will happen is that if they hear any reports of the donor not feeling fine in any way, it means that, that the blood that they've donated may have been contaminated of whatever thing that is making that donor not to be feeling fine. They can also initiate a record. Now, what am I trying to say? If within the hospital you have received a blood product, okay, now that blood product has been issued to patient, but following the transfusion, the patient starts reacting to that blood product. So once there's a transfusion reaction, you know, and that transfusion reaction, you now start suspecting that this might be due to a bacterial contamination. What you are going to do then is to contact the hematologist, that the hematology consultant in the hospital, and discuss it with them. Following that discussion, and of course, with the doctor that is looking after the patient, based on the clinical decision, you can then be advised to contact NHSBT hospital services. So when you contact them, you can then let them know what has happened. That a patient has received this blood product and started reacting. The doctors are suspecting that it is a bacterial contamination or as the case may be. Why this is important? Because sometimes people might react because of this bacterial blood contamination in the blood and that can lead to what we call trialing. Transfusion related acute lung injury. So once there's a transfusion reaction and you are suspecting trialing, which sometimes may be associated with this microorganism contamination like bacteria. Once it is suspected, one of the things that the clinical decision is going to be following the discussion with the hematology consultant and also the doctors in the world, they may tell you to contact NHSBT. And when you contact NHSBT, you will tell them what is being suspected. Again, the same protocol will take place. They will also fax their form to you and then you complete all the details and again, they may tell you to either discard the blood product or they can tell you, okay, quarantine it. We are going to send you a bottle, which is a bio bottle, to send it back to us. Then you also send it along with the form that you have completed. So what I'm trying to say here is that it is not just because you observe something. It could be because of the effect, patient response following blood transfusion. So if the patient response following blood transfusion indicates there is a trally maybe associated with bacterial contamination of the blood product, then you also need to initiate a recall of that very product. Of course, if they've not finished transfusing the patient, you then need to stop the transfusion. You need to advise them to stop the transfusion to further investigate that. If they have finished transfusing the patient, of course, that will also be investigated and the patient will be monitored very closely. I hope this makes sense. And once it has to do with bacterial contamination associated with trialing, NHSBT do their best, okay, to finish the investigation within four to six weeks. So, so far, I have explained how hospital can initiate a record by calling the NHSBT, okay, saying what they've observed, you know, either physically or based on the patient response to the blood transfusion. Another thing is that it may not be the hospital, like I've said before, it could be the NHSBT themselves. An HSBT may have issued the blood product, then they realize that after they've issued the blood product, they realize that that blood product may be hazard, may be, may be a potential hazard to a patient that will receive the blood product. They will then call the hospital. When they call the hospital, the same thing that the hospital did when they called the NHSBT, that is what NHSBT will do when they call the hospital. So when they call the hospital, they are going to ask some questions. They are going to say, 
I'm calling regarding so 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 blood product. Okay, so what the person receiving the call will do is to check from the hospital record do we still have that unit or has a patient been transfused of that unit? Now, what happened that if we still have the unit, then you say, I still have the unit. Now, an HSBT might tell you to guarantee the unit, okay? They're going to send you a bio bottle to send back that unit to them. Or they may tell you to discard it, whichever way. In the spirit of what they say, at the end, they're going to also send you a form, like I've said, and they'll send you the form, you'll complete that form and send it back to them. Once the blood is received following the donation, the blood get to the NHSBT, they do further tests. Like I've said, they have, one of their further tests will be to do microbiology culture, meaning that they can do blood culture, they can culture the platelets as the case may be. So when they culture it, they are waiting to see if there's going to be any bacterial growth or something like that. If there's no bacterial growth, they will issue it. But sometimes, following issuing it, they may still notice, oh, something is growing now, they can recall it back. Or, like I've said, if they notice that the donor is no longer feeling fine, depending on the situation, they may decide to recall it back because if the donor is not feeling fine, it means that whatever thing that is making that donor not to feel fine may be in that blood product. And that means it might be potential hazard to the person that will receive it, then they can recall it back. So if they recall it back, like I've said, the same thing that happened when the hospital make the phone call is still what is going to happen. The only difference here is that it is the NHSBT that will be making the call. So what I want to say here is this. When it comes to a recall, what happens in a recall is that something that can potentially harm a patient has been observed. Once you observe any slightly thing, that may look like there's abnormality with that blood product or with that material, you then have to initiate a record. So this is what happened in NHSBT record process or procedures. I hope this makes sense. Now, in addition to NHSBT record, now let me also talk about general laboratory record because some of you have gone for an interview. Sometimes they will not ask you about NHSBT record. They may be asking you about maybe laboratory record. They may say, what do you know? What do you understand about laboratory record? Now, whichever way you want to go, record means the same thing. What it means is it just be, the only difference that it depends on what you are recalling. So when it comes to NHSB2, what you are recalling is blood product. Whether it is a hospital initiating the recall or NHSBT initiating the recall. But it recall can also happen with another product. Think about any product in the laboratory. The material that you use to work in the laboratory can be recalled. Meaning that once you get a material in the laboratory, okay, and you investigate that material, if everything is okay, you start using it. Remember in my previous video, I talked about something like reagent verification or reagent validation. I also mentioned something like analyzer validation and so on. So what it means that any product that you are using in the laboratory, once you receive it from the manufacturer, you need to make sure that the product is working as stipulated, as mentioned by the manufacturer. So what you're going to do, you run your, you use your method and test that product to see whether it's going to give you the result as stated by the manufacturer. If everything is okay, then you can use it. However, if you test it, everything seems not okay, you recall it. You then have to call the manufacturer and say, this is what you observe. Based on your observation, then you can initiate a recall. That means the, the, the company will tell you, send us back that product. You see it now. And what happened in most cases, if hospital A notice that, what that company is going to do, they will recall all of that product that they've supplied to every other hospitals. I hope this makes sense. Another way this can happen also will be maybe the manufacturer themselves or the company themselves noticing that this thing that we have issued, this thing that we've supplied to people is not working the way we think. If they notice anything that seems like that is no longer going to work as we initially thought, they will also call the hospital and say send it back to us, they will, meaning they will initiate a recall. So recall basically means when you notice any form of abnormalities 
in any materials, okay, you then initiate a record. Record means that you then have to initiate the process of investigating why that is not working, and through that process, that material may be destroyed, or maybe there could be a, you know a kind of update on the best way to use that material. So that is what record means. But when we are recording a product, we are looking at is it dangerous, is it potentially dangerous, or is it least dangerous. Once you notice any of this in any materials used in the laboratory, you then have to recall it. So once again, the recall means you've seen something that you think that may be dangerous, potential dangerous, or least dangerous, whether to the method you are using in the laboratory, which of course obviously will affect the patient result, which means that the laboratory will no longer be within conformance because it's going to give you a wrong result. Once you notice any of those things, any of those abnormalities, you then have to recall it. And once again, recall means you giving a call to the manufacturer or the manufacturer giving you a call as a customer saying, there is something that we've observed, we don't want you to use this or we, want to, we are going to investigate this further. That means that that material will not be used until it is investigated. And what happens sometimes, it can be said, okay, no further investigation, just destroy the material and you complete all the necessary document or form that you are requested to fill in and you fill it and you send it back to them so that is what recall means i hope i've been able to you know explain this recall very well so once you think about recall from the word recall you are calling something back meaning you are saying this is that you're giving to me i don't think is working let me just add this to what we experience in our day to day life. So, you've ordered something in Amazon, or maybe you've ordered something, or even you've gone to the shop and bought something, okay, which is common here in the UK. Once you've bought something, or maybe you've ordered something, if you don't like it, you send it back to them. When you send it back, that is a record. It means that the reason why you bought that thing, it doesn't fit in with the purpose why you bought it. Some of us have bought clothes we think will size us, and it didn't size us then we'll send it back. That process that you notice, oh, this does not work for me, and you send it back, that is a record. And that is what laboratory record means, and of course, that is also what NHSBT record means. So, with NHSBT, you are looking at the blood product, but with the laboratory record, you are looking at, of course, the blood product or any other materials used in the laboratory. I hope this makes sense. Thank you very much. If you have any question, you know, put your comment on the comment section. And also, can I ask you to like, share, and subscribe. You know, this video as well, you can also decide to click on the super thanks. So if you like the video, you can click on the super thanks, you know, to appreciate the content, okay? And also, you can also decide to join any level of membership of this YouTube channel. So by all you need to do is just to click on the join. It will now take you to where you can be able to join any particular membership level that, you know, um, that befits you. Thank you very much till I come back away again.